Welcome to this screencast titled Master Data Services Business Rules. My name is Ola Ekdal and I'm with IT Mentors. In this session we're going to look at how you build and apply business rules that you want to use within Master Data Services. So a couple of examples of business rules could be that you want a particular uh, product uh, identifier to have a certain number of characters, you want a number to be within a particular range, you want to compare value against some other value that, that you specify, and you can also use business rules to kick off uh, workflows. So let's go ahead and dive right into the actual build environment itself that we use to build these business rules. So I have an attribute called overdraft that I have defined for the uh, customer entity. So what I want to do is I want to build a business rule that limits the overdraft to 10,000. So if somebody, when they enter a new customer, uh, they by mistake or for some reason uh, enter a value over 10,000, I want to prevent that from happening. So the way we go about doing this is we go to the home page system administration we select manage and then we select business rules so in this particular example we're going to work with the uh, customer entity you can see that I already have a rule defined uh, by default you get no rules defined so I'm going to go ahead and add one more additional rule here so I click on the uh, add business rule see it adds another one and it also says the status here that the rule has not yet been defined so I highlight that and then I click on edit selected business rule and here is the design environment that we work with so we have an if something happens then I want to do something and you can see that we have a number of components that we can work with here so we have some logical operators and or we have conditions is equal to greater than ends with contains contains the subset is between etc and then we also have a number of actions so we want to default the value to a particular value that, we, that we're working with we're going to change the value we can also use this for validation so when you create an entity and you have certain attributes that are mandatory uh, then you can add a rule here where we have no entries under um, if conditions and then we just add under the in the then section and under actions here we just add is required for example for my product name and or customer name and whatnot you can also if we scroll all the way down into the bottom you can also use the business rule to kick off an external workflow and I do have a, a whole session where we'll discuss dealing with workflows in more detail so the way I'm working with this is, uh, again, we're going to set the overdraft limit, make sure it's not over 10,000. So I'm going to work with my value comparison, and I'm going to say is greater than, just drag that over and drop that on top of conditions. Now, the next thing is we obviously need to specify, well, what is it that cannot be greater than, and what value are we working with? So what you're doing next here is you're taking the overdraft attribute and you drag that over here under the edit condition where it says select attribute, we'll drop that, it's going to refresh and here we can now specify the value of uh, 10,000, so if it's greater than 10,000 and I'm going to save that, then we're going to choose an action. We want that to default to, so drag it on top of actions. And we're still working with overdraft. And I want that to default to 10,000. We'll go ahead and save that. And once that has been saved, you can see that we see the actual overdraft is greater than 10,000. Overdraft is then going to default to 10,000. You can also expand the actual expression here and look at it. If we go back to the previous screen, 
you can see that in the expression column, if I just mouse over, we can also see the expression there again. Now this particular business rule has not been activated. So what we need to do is we highlight this and then we have an option here to publish business rules. Now, quick note here, when I do this, it's going to publish all my business rules. You can also check here and say that it's going to be excluded. So I'm going to exclude the first one and I'm going to publish the business rules so you can see that this one is active. The previous one that I had created is excluded. So once I've created a rule, the way the, this gets activated and uh, the real power of this uh, lies in when I load um, large amounts of data using SSIS for example into my uh, staging area then I can apply all the business rules before I load it from staging into uh, master data services. Now I can also go into version management and then we can say validate this particular version. You can see that right now it says not validated. So if I say validate version it's gonna go about uh, validating against the business rules that I have defined. So once the validation is done uh, the value of 15,000 that was entered for one of the customers is going to be reverted back to the default value that I specified which was 10,000. So that's one way of validating um, your business rules and uh, you can also enforce this when you load data into master data services. Now one thing that I want to point out here is if you go in and you look at some of these sample models that we have so we have the chart of accounts and customer and product. If I go in and I look at business rules for some of those, give you a good idea of uh, some of the things that you can do. So if I go into product entity, for example, you can see that we have a couple of business rules here. You can just mouse over if you want to see the uh, expressions. And obviously, we can open this up. So let's say we'll take the bottom one here, we'll click on edit, and here we have the if condition, if finish, uh, finish good indicator equals yes, then the uh, market price must be greater than zero, and dealer cost must be greater than, uh, than zero. Just one example of a uh, business rule to actually make sure that once the product has been produced and it's good to go that we actually have to assign uh, prices as well, market price and uh, dealer cost. So that's uh, a couple of things as it relates to business rules and master data services. I want to finish this session by pointing out some resources. MSDev.com is where you can find the rest of the recordings in this series about master data services. And also make sure to check out the product team's blog, sqlblogs.com blogs slash MDS underscore team. Lots of really good useful information there. So with that, I would like to say thank you very much.